Welcome to this week's edition of COVID Update. I am your host Nick Townsley and we have an amazing night planned ahead of you. Don't forget, tonight after the message, you're going to jump on a Zoom call with the rest of your tribe. In recent news, many of us are sad we can no longer go out to eat at our favorite restaurants. However, last week McDonald's released their secret Big Mac sauce recipe to the rest of the world. Now you can make a Big Mac right at home. The only thing you'll need is the rest of the ingredients, which sadly you cannot get because you cannot leave your house. Also, Wednesday, we will be doing a part two of our Survivor Quarantine Edition. If you would like to join or be a part of it, please join the Zoom chat. And now, the newest member of our team, field reporter Michael Higdon with the announcements. Michael, take it away. Hey, what is up, Edge students? So we have a ton of things happening in Edge Movement right now. So first, we have video fine arts. So if you entered in fine arts, you still have time to submit a video of your performance. So make sure that you record it with your phone horizontally and then send that video over to nextgen at rockchurchnow.com. Submissions are due by April 21st, so go ahead and get those in as quickly as possible. Michael, your voice is much higher than I remember. Is everything okay? Second, if you are a graduating senior, we want you to be part of our graduation service. In the comments below, click the link to fill out your graduation application before the end of the month. Finally, guys, we have a ton of things happening during the quarantine, so make sure that you join us on our Zoom chats, Instagram Live, and even our Sunday service online. That's all we've got. Back to you. Thank you for those announcements, Michael. Now we're going to be moving on to the game segment. All right, we're going to play a quick game called Trivia Addiction. So pull out your phone, pull out a piece of paper and a pen, and get ready to write down the answers of these questions. All right, here we go. many trivia questions you guys got right let us know your score in the comments below now before we close out this week's edition of COVID update we're going to be visiting a fan favorite segment called checking in on Jacob where we check in on Jacob Alchunas take a look checking in on Jacob. hey Jacob welcome back thanks for uh, joining us this time I know we didn't really get to any questions last time but how are you doing during this quarantine you know I've, I've been hanging in there you know there's not it's not a Ton of stuff to. <laughs> That's all for this week's edition of COVID Update. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please stay tuned for the rest of the night. It's times like these that the church gets to shine. God's people get to set the example, and we as a community of believers get to point to heaven. It's times like these that faith triumphs fear and the devil gets reminded of his place. 
It's times like these that Jesus uses what the enemy intended for evil to bring forth good. It's times like these that we get the opportunity to set the tone, to change the spiritual climate of a nation. It's times like these that we will see unconventional miracles, mending of broken families, hurting hearts made whole, the restoration in marriages, and the original design for the church to be reestablished. It's times like these that we get to experience and see firsthand that we as the human race are better together. It's times like these that we truly realize no weapon formed against us will prosper. That we get to praise Jesus, not only for what he's done, but for what he's going to do. It's times like these that we get to lean into Jesus and find that he will catch us every single time. It's times like these that renew a passion and refocus perspective. It's times like these that spark an awakening, a turning of hearts back to the Creator. It's times like these that the church gets to shine in an unconventional way and shine we will. We will not be afraid or back down. We will not propagate fear but demonstrate hope. We will not sit back and allow culture to dictate the narrative. We will choose to care for the least of these and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We will sing all the louder of the goodness of our God. We will pray fast and turn from our wicked ways. We will seek his face and he will hear from heaven and heal our land. This will be the greatest awakening this world has ever experienced. And we will see that the gates of hell will not prevail. Love will prevail. Love will bind us together. And love will win the day. So today we are going to be singing Sea of Victory by Appalachian Worship. Before we get started, I would like to read a verse or two. Um, so in 1 John 5, verse 3 through 4, it says, In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So I believe that what that's saying is that our faith is strong enough so we can overcome the world with um, this whole epidemic thing that's happening. Um, I can see that this is what's God. This is his plan. And he has a victory through this. And if we are strong enough in our faith that we can also overcome this. God knows what he's doing. And this is his plan. And it says in the bridge of the song that God takes what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it for good. And he's going to take this whole thing and he's going to turn it for good. And he's going to make something so beautiful out of it. So um, let's pray and then we'll get into worship. Lord, I just pray that through everything that's happening, Lord, that you that you make your plan, that you go through your plan, Lord, that I pray that you take a victory and you make this a victory. I pray that through everything that's happening, through the death and the sickness, that um, you continue to do good, Lord. You always will do. God, you are so good. And I just pray that through this all that we see a victory through you, Lord. Amen. i 
bunnies and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? What's up, guys? Welcome to our final week of Happy Easter. Next week, we're going to begin a new series, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, So let's jump right in tonight. Uh, I'm excited for what God's going to do in your tribes. I want to encourage you, invite your friends to, to what we're doing on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. We want them to be a part of it as much as we want you to be a part of it during the quarantine as it is wrapping up, hopefully soon. We're excited for what God's already doing. Uh, So before we get going, I want to tell you really quick, uh, as I get my message notes up, uh, that there's this little word called loneliness that I think we all feel a lot of the times. Um, I know when I was a kid, uh, I remember getting lost in mire before it was quarantine. Uh, I was like five years old, and I've probably told this story like 80 times, but I I got lost, and to me it felt like I got lost in like Detroit, like the worst place ever. Uh, And I ended up turning and looking for my my family, and nobody was there. And I just start bawling, because I was a really sensitive kid. And I find this uh, elderly woman or man, I can't remember who it was, 
and like just bawling my eyes out. I lost my mom, lost my dad. And they go over to the PA speaker and, and they're like, all right, we got a lost kid and end up getting my mom and dad back to me. And when I was a five-year-old, <laughs> it seemed like it was a huge deal. And, and for some of you, you might have felt lost at some point in your life um, or even lonely. You know, maybe your family moved, uh, maybe a friend group changed when you went to high school or, or you lost a friend, maybe you had a breakup and you felt lonely. Uh, certain decisions may have happened in your life that, that you don't understand and now you feel lonely. And I think we all know what it's like to be on our own in some way or another. We all know what it's like to be on our own. And some of us don't like that feeling of being on our own, right? And, and we have to be with people all the time. And, and when we feel like we're on our own, we start to believe things that seem true in the moment, but generally they're not true. Maybe we think that nobody understands us, or ever will, or maybe we'll never find somebody in our lives, right? When, when we're lonely for a certain amount of time, we start to believe things that aren't true in our lives. Sometimes, even think about it, we, we tend to feel overwhelmed when we feel alone. Maybe you're thinking about your future and where you wanna go to college and how, how are you gonna pay for that? How, how am I gonna do that all by myself, right? Or maybe you're, you're heading into a new season of your life where you're, you're just overwhelmed by how much you have to do by yourself or how much you have to be by yourself, right? But what do you do about it? I think sh friends showing up is important, right? But when it comes down to it, uh, being in your tribe is important, all those things. Uh, when, when you feel alone and when you are alone, it's part of life, so how do we handle it? Well, believe it or not, that happened uh, the very first Easter, the days that followed, there were people that felt alone. The very first Easter, people felt uh, just as overwhelmingly alone as you might feel in your life. Uh, if you want to flip with me to your Bibles, John chapter 16, verse 7. After Jesus died and went back to heaven, he said to his disciples that, I'm going to leave you, but there's somebody better that's coming in the future, right? And what happened is the people that trusted Jesus and believed in Jesus and watched him die and come back to life, watched him go back to heaven and they left him. And in that moment, they felt alone. But Jesus actually told him that in that moment, it's, it's better for you to be without me because I'm sending somebody who's better for you, right? I'm sending the advocate to come. And basically what that was is the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of God, coming to be present in our lives, even though he wasn't physically present, right? The, the Spirit of God was advocating in their lives so that they were never alone. Jesus, Jesus promised that, he, that he, if he would have left, it would have been better for us. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was there. And I want to tell you this, in your seasons of loneliness, you might feel like God isn't there. But, but the Holy Spirit, if you said yes last week, or maybe you changed uh, habits and sins in your life from last week, I want to tell you that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to come and, and be there for you in your life and help you to not feel alone and give you power to go through your day. You know, the Christian movement, the Christian movement, what we do today actually started on this principle of being alone. There was a powerful empire. Uh, there was a lot of persecution in the government and people had no idea what was about to happen. They were unsure about their future. And because Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to them, and not only just to them, but to us, we are given that power to continue God's movement in our lives. And that's what's gonna help us in our lonely seasons. Uh, the Holy Spirit, write this down, gave them power even though they seemed powerless. When Jesus promised an advocate who would give us power and be with us, that was true for everyone who would ever believe in him. Think about that for a second. When Jesus did that, he, he gave you power. When you say yes to Jesus, he, he wants to say, hey, you have power in your life to tell somebody about me and, and you'll never be alone because I'm always with you. And that's what it is. Easter, we're wrapping up the series. Easter is about never being alone. It means that you're never alone. Jesus' first followers knew exactly what it was like 
They knew exactly what it was like to be on their own, right? And after he died, he, uh, it seemed like all their hopes and dreams were crushed and everything that they believed in was crushed. And I can imagine them, you know, watching somebody come back to life and then watching them go away and saying it's better to be without them. What if you and I could live with the same assurance that the early church lived with because of the Holy Spirit? What if this is real? What if the Bible isn't just telling some story, but what it's saying is actually real? What would that look like in our lives? What would that look like in your life if you began to live by the power of the Holy Spirit, by, by what Jesus said and did, right, in your life, in your life? So here's a few things I want to I want to give you some some advice, some tips as you head into your tribes. And if you don't know how to get to your tribes, send us a message, put a comment below, and we'll get you to your tribes. You can talk to him at any time, any place, for any reason. When you feel alone, you can talk to Jesus at any time, any place, and for any reason. Next time you feel alone or on your own, talk about God, how you're you're feeling, and, and then reach out to somebody, right? Bring it to God before you bring it to other people. And number two, you are stronger than you actually are. We can be confident, confident in God's power and other believers will be there to support you too. You know what that means? It means when you feel lonely, go to God and then go to your tribe and and reach out to people who are actually going to be there for you. And remember, Easter means that you're never alone. So as you head into tribes, I want you to answer this question for yourself. In what way, in what area of your life do you feel alone? In what area or what way do you feel alone? So go ahead, head to your tribes. You're going to watch a video in a second that explains how to get on Zoom uh, if you don't know what Zoom is. And if you have any questions about your tribe, private message us, put in the comments below. We want to get you plugged in uh, to a small group, to a tribe right now. We'll see you guys next week when we start our new series. Here's a quick tutorial on how to download Zoom. First, go to your app or Google Play Store and search Zoom. Then hit the download button. Once your app is downloaded, then you'll need to hit the sign up button to create an account. If you're a parent watching this, this app is very secure. We have all of our adult leaders on every chat to monitor the video call. Then click on the link that we have provided you and Zoom will automatically redirect you on the chat with your tribe. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.